and welcome to another teaching by 119 Ministries. Our ministry teaches that the whole Bible is true and applicable for our lives today. If you would like to know more about what we believe and teach, please visit us at testeverything.net. We hope that you enjoy studying and testing the following teaching. If you watch 119 Ministries teachings long enough, we are going to eventually say something that you don't like, or even greatly offend you. We guarantee that at minimum, you will eventually disagree with us on something. For many, this may be one of those teachings. Whenever we enter into a subject that is controversial or risks offending, we attempt to be as delicate and careful in our wording as possible, but not at the expense of sharing truth. 119 Ministries does not exist because we think it is fun. We assure you, it is not fun to receive many of the emails we receive on a daily basis, or to see certain websites' sole purpose of existence to be dedicated against 119 Ministries. It is not fun to see and hear the hurtful comments directed at us with no underlying evidence of being kind or loving in their presentation. 119 Ministries exists with the sole purpose to serve and assist you and yours in the walking of our Creator's desires for all of us, as the same walk evidenced by Messiah Yeshua. It is our desire to see as many people as possible not only to enter into the kingdom, but to be great in the kingdom, not for our glory, but for the eternal glory of the One who made us and loves us. You may have noticed that ever since the beginning of 119 Ministries, none, or at least very few instances of our media or graphics contain what is called today as the Star of David. There is a reason for this. It is not accidental. It has nothing to do with us being against the Jewish people. We love the Jewish people, and biblically, they are our brothers. Our concerns are rooted in the origins of the Star of David, and what the Bible may have to say regarding that specific design of a star. Contrary to our past of not displaying the Star of David, this teaching will certainly include this image quite often, as that is what this teaching is about. So, if this image offends you, we recommend not continuing with this teaching. The star itself is a six-pointed star, also known as a hexagram. In Jewish commentary, it is also referred to as the Shield of David and sometimes as the Seal of Solomon. Within the Jewish people, we see this star everywhere. This star is even at the center of the national flag of Israel. It is placed on menorahs, mezuzahs, and even the covers of books and even coffee cups. Even those who follow the teachings of our Messiah Yeshua often emphasize and display this star, often out of support for the modern nation of Israel. The Origins of the Star of David Proving the origins of the Star of David is quite difficult. Some of the earliest usage found in Jewish context is from the 3rd or 4th century in a synagogue in Galilee. However, unlike the menorah, Lion of Judah, or the Shofar, which are biblical examples of Jewish symbolism, the hexagram is shared in other historical contexts as well. Hinduism and Buddhism are some of the other ancient examples of this star being used in a religious setting. Some of the oldest usages of the Hindu hexagram is dated to be hundreds of years before our Messiah. The hexagram is also a prominent symbol in the occult and ceremonial magic. This six-pointed star is commonly used both as a talisman and for conjuring spirits and spiritual forces in numerous forms of occult magic. In the book, The History and Practice of Magic, Volume 2, this six-pointed star is called the Talisman of Saturn and is also referred to as the Seal of Solomon. For purposes revealed later in this teaching, please note that the pagan occult relates the hexagram to the planet Saturn. The symbol also presents itself in Freemasonry. The interlacing triangles, or deltas, symbolize the union of two principles or forces, the active and passive, male and female, pervading the universe. The two triangles, one white and the other black, interlacing, typify the mingling of apparent opposites in nature, darkness and light, air and truth, ignorance and wisdom, evil and good throughout human life. In short, the Freemason definition of the hexagram would also serve well as a definition of the biblical tree of good and evil, meaning mixing. 
the fruit of which was presented to Adam and Eve by the adversary. We could teach for hours on different contexts in which this symbol presents itself. If that subject matter interests you, we would encourage you to embark on your own personal independent study. It was sufficient for our purposes of this teaching to simply highlight some of the historical usages of the hexagram. We'll stop here related to the cultic connection to the hexagram as it becomes quite disturbing in greater detail. The bottom line can be summarized by the following facts. Number one, the linkage of the hexagram to David appears to be by tradition only. There is no definitive proof that David was ever associated with this symbol. Some have speculated that it is two Hebrew letter dalets placed together to represent David. There is, however, no evidence that exists to suggest this. Number two, the origins of the hexagram are unclear. We cannot definitively state that the origins are Jewish or the origins are from the pagan occult. History demonstrates that both groups entertain the symbol in their worship practices. The occult links the hexagram to the worship of Saturn. Here is one thing that we know is true. It could be easily argued that the most dominant and true symbolic sign for Yahweh's people is the menorah. Yet we don't ever see the occult using the seven candle menorah in their worship. Why is the occult and other pagan religions so connected to the hexagram star if it is truly a sign of the Jewish people? Why is that symbol mixed in usage? We believe there is an answer to that question, but let's go back to the Star of David. There is a specific star that is connected to the Jewish people that is found in the Brit Hadashah, or the New Testament. In Acts chapter 6 through 7, Stephen went on an impressive and bold rant against the first century Jewish leadership, outlining many of their previous and current errors. Following this rant, they stoned him to death. In Stephen's epic rant, immediately following his mention of the events of the golden calf, he refers to Amos chapter 5 verse 26, in which he refers to a specific star in a profoundly negative light. Acts chapter 7. Did you bring to me slain beasts and sacrifices during the forty years in the wilderness, O house of Israel? You took up the tent of Moloch and the star of your god Raphan, the images that you made to worship, and I will send you into exile beyond Babylon. According to Stephen, there is a particular star that Israel adopted in its worship of false gods. So the only star biblically associated with Israel that is mentioned in both the Tanakh and the Brit Hadashah paints it as one of the worst offenses to Yahweh imaginable, which is idolatry and the worship of false gods. It is in the same context that Yahweh mentions the exile of Israel. So this image that they made to worship, a specific star in the context of worshiping false gods, is no small or inconsequential thing. Stephen found it so important to reveal the error of using this star that he included it in the last few sentences he ever uttered before being violently stoned to death by those who did not want to hear it. Is this specific star in Israel's history mentioned by Stephen a hexagram? Let's examine this a little deeper. Stephen was referring to Amos chapter 5 verse 26. So let's start there. Amos chapter 5. You shall take up Sikuth your king, and Kiyun your star god, your images that you made for yourselves. Stephen mentions the god Raphan to be associated with the noted star. Stephen was quoting from the Septuagint, which is the Greek version of the Old Testament, the Tanakh. As we see in the Hebrew scriptures, Raphan is the god Kiyun. Kiyun is dominantly believed by scholars to be the god of Saturn. In Strong's, probably a statue of the Assyrian Babylonian god of the planet Saturn, and used to symbolize Israelite apostasy. And other lexicons also agree. The name of an idol worshipped by the Israelites in the wilderness, i.e., the planet Saturn. So the Israelites created an image of a star to represent the planet Saturn and incorporated it into their worship. According to the prophets, this was very bad, not very good. So was this star a hexagram? We still cannot know for certain, but here is what we do know. As we mentioned before, the six-pointed star is commonly used both as a talisman for conjuring spirits and spiritual forces in many forms of occult magic. In the book, The History and Practice of Magic, Volume 2, the six-pointed star is called the Talisman of Saturn, and it is also referred to as the Seal of Solomon. 
a way that this star is commonly portrayed, appears as the following. We would like to highlight a certain feature of this star and compare it with a known mysterious fact about Saturn. Remember, according to the Tanakh and the Brit Hadashah, the goddess Saturn is associated with an image of a specific design of a certain star, and the Israelites were accused of replicating it and worshiping with it. And again, this was a very bad thing, not a very good thing. Outright, we simply do not know the exact details of this star. But what if the actual planet of Saturn reveals to us what the star of Saturn looks like? At this point, you're likely wondering what in the world could we possibly be referring to. So, take note of what we just highlighted regarding the Star of David and the cultic hexagram and we'll proceed with a graphical connection to the planet Saturn. In some of the first detailed photos of the planet Saturn in the early 1980s, it was immediately noticed that the pole of Saturn exemplifies a persistent hexagon cloud formation. This mirrors the interior of the hexagram used by the Star of David and Coltic Hexagon. Here is an image from April 2, 2014. Here is an image from 2012 that is directly over the North Pole of Saturn. This image is from November 20, 2006. As you can clearly see, this massive six-sided image is always present on the North Pole of Saturn. Just the sides of the hexagon are about 8,600 miles long, which is more than the diameter of the Earth. So we have scripture warning us of incorporating a star of the god of Saturn into our worship. And we have scientific evidence that shows that the actual planet of Saturn features this same image at its north pole. How did the ancients know that Saturn had this six-pointed sign without sending out man-made satellites? The answer is the occult is real. The power of evil is real. This symbol is real. We're going to stop short of blatantly saying that one should not have this symbol in their house, despite the fact that it is the position of One Night Ministries has adopted. All we did is connect some facts, and one could always walk away saying, this is all simply a coincidence. We would encourage prayer on the matter and seek the Spirit with open ears to assist you and yours with any action you would take for or against this symbol. For review, here are the facts we uncovered and recommended considering. Number one, the hexagram is historically present in worship activities for both Israel and the occult. The occult specifically states that the hexagram is for the worship of the planet of Saturn. Number two, the only warning we are given about a specific star in Israel adopting such an image for worship is related to the god of Saturn. Number three, the actual planet of Saturn contains a perpetual six-pointed image and is an exact replica of the center of the Star of David and cultic hexagram. So, what do we do with all of that? Perhaps now it is understood why we stated that this teaching was going to be so controversial. Because the evidence is circumstantial, despite the apparent strength of the Star of David's connection to the god of Saturn, we cannot absolutely conclude that the star of the god of Saturn was a hexagram. However, for years we have avoided incorporating the symbol in our worship of our Creator. 119 Ministries has maintained from the beginning that actual biblical symbolism should be what we consider preferable. In the end, these matters are not provable. We all need to decide what is right or not right for our own households. We hope that this teaching has blessed you. And remember, Continue to test everything. Shalom. It is because of you, our generous supporters, who make it possible to offer these high-quality teachings completely free of charge. If you feel led to support 119 Ministries so that we can continue this effort, please visit testeverything.net and click on the Support 119 tab. Learn how you can partner with us to take the whole Word of God to the nations.